So, a very predictable fight, a very predictable result. Carl Frampton defeats Nonito Doné on a 12-round unanimous decision. It was the fight I certainly expected. Frampton barely put a foot wrong. He boxed a controlled, smart, disciplined fight. He boxed, for the most part, at long range on the back foot. But he did at times impose himself on Nonito Doné and put some damage on him when he felt like he had to. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 for Carl Frampton. He did what he was supposed to do. Nonito Doné, as I said in my pre-fight uh, you know, preview, Doné has been past it for years. This is why I was so adamant that Carl Frampton was going to win this fight comfortably. Because Doné has been past it for years. He's been over the hill for years. And not only that, all Doné's best wins were at lower weights. Where he had considerable, well he normally had most of the time, considerable size, strength and power advantages over his opponents. Moving up to featherweight, he just don't have those size advantages over his opponents and he's always been easy to hit. Even in his prime, Donaire was not a guy that was difficult to catch. And we saw that here again against Carl Frampton. So yeah, predictable fight, predictable result. And Frampton marches on. Uh, Donaire, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what you should do from here. Maybe you should retire. I, I really don't care, to be honest with you. He's been past it for so long. If he was going to retire, he should have retired before now, you know, because he hasn't been relevant for a long time. As I said previously, ever since Guillermo Rigondo beat him, what has Donaire done? He ain't done nothing since then. He hasn't been relevant since then. When he fought Victor Chinian after, because he fought Victor Chinian twice, when he fought him after the Rigondo fight, he struggled with Darchinian, like really struggled with him until he managed to, you know, eventually overcome. But, you know, <laughs> and, and that was several years ago. So against a Carl Frampton, who's a much bigger, stronger, harder hitting guy than someone like Darchinian, there was only ever going to be one result. And in the first round, Denaire was looking pretty confident. In the second round, Carl Frampton realized, you know what, I need to show this guy what I've got to put him in his place. And that's what he did. He backed Denier into a corner and he unloaded some big shots on Denier and he put Denier in his place. After that flurry in the corner, Denier's whole demeanor changed <laughs> and he realized that it's not that kind of party. You know, he, he realized that Frampton was a very big, strong guy and that he wouldn't just be able to bully him. And so he was far more cautious after that. To Donaire's credit, he showed good punch resistance. He took all Carl Frampton's best shots and never looked like going down. At least not to my eyes. And he did land some good shots late in the fight, in the 11th and 12th round particularly. He landed some very big left hooks. The left hook has always been Anil Donaire's best shot. He landed some big left hooks that landed bang on Carl Frampton's chin. They literally couldn't have landed more flush. But... They didn't have the desired effect. I think Frampton was buzzed a little bit a couple of times, but if that had been a bantamweight back in the days, the fight probably would have been over when Denier landed them shots. But up at featherweight, it just don't have the same effect on these big guys. So yeah, for me, a very predictable fight, predictable result. Uh, hopefully we get to see Carl Frampton in something more competitive and more meaningful in the near future. I know the fans were sold this show by Frank Warren and whatnot. And, you know, this was uh, being billed as the most decorated former world champion to have ever fought in Ireland. This is what Frank Warren was selling it as. I mean, yeah, maybe so. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't checked, but we're talking about a decorated former world champion who is long, long past his prime. I mean, way, way past his prime. And fighting at a weight division way above his optimum. I mean, he's a big guy. He's always been a big guy, Nonito Donaire. Like I said, he had a huge size advantage over many of his opponents at lighter weights. But that's where he was most effective at the lighter weights. Up at featherweight, he ain't doing no damage there. You know, he's not making no impact on the world stage. So it is what it is. Uh, let me know how you guys felt 
about Carl Frampton's performance. As I say, you can't take nothing away from Frampton. He did what he was supposed to do. You know, he boxed well, smart, applied his ability pretty much to perfection, and he got the win. Uh, but let me know what you felt about it. Maybe some of you guys out there were expecting a more competitive fight. Uh, maybe because Frampton hadn't looked good in some of his recent performances. That's understandable if you look vulnerable, but you have to understand Donaire has been looking even worse than Frampton, <laughs> you know, against lesser opposition. So, yeah, anyway, let me know how you feel. I'm out.